Hey, what up guys, welcome back to my programming channel and today we're going to discuss the difference between proof of work and proof of stake. So what is proof of work? What is proof of stake? And why is Ethereum switching from proof of work to a proof of stake algorithm? Let's talk about it, guys. So proof of work and proof of stake are algorithms with the same purpose and the purpose is to establish consensus on the blockchain meaning that we want to agree on a certain state of the blockchain all the nodes in the blockchain need to agree on a certain state so guys when a new block is produced it needs to be appended to the blockchain and all of the miners Guys, all of the miners try to mine it. So what, what, do we, do, what do we mean by mining a block? What we mean is the following. When a block arrives, we hash all of the transactions in the block and we get a hash of those transactions. Then we need to find some... Uh, some proof or in the Bitcoin blockchain, it's called nonsense. So the miners receive this hash of the new block and they need to find this other part, the proof. And so when they append those two together, they need to receive a certain answer that, and they know what they're looking for. So they have the hash, they need to come up with a nonsense <laughs> It's called a nonsense, but it's basically some random uh, bits. Uh, and so when they append those two parts together into a string, when they hash this string, they should get a certain answer. And this answer is public and publicly known. Usually, if we talk about Bitcoin blockchain, in the B Bitcoin blockchain, this answer is is a hash and it's need to, it needs to start with a certain number of zeros. And so all the miners know that. They know the hash of the block, on the, of the new block, and they know the answer they should get when they append this hash with their nonsense. However, the whole challenge is to find this nonsense that when you, <laughs> when you append uh, the hash of the block with the nonsense, you should hash it and you should get this answer and as, as i said guys in the blockchain in the bitcoin blockchain this answer is usually a string and we only care about the fact that this string should start with maybe 20 or 40 zeros i'm not sure but it's like it's a number of zeros and so all of the miners know what they're looking for however it's very hard to come up with this nonsense and so what they end up doing guys is trying different different nonsenses they take the hash of the new block and they try a nonsense they append it they hash the, this this answer and uh, they see do my ha do my new hash start with 20 zeros no okay then i need to take uh, the hash of the new block and i need to come up with another nonsense and i hash it and i check do do my answer starts with 20 zeros no and so you you continue doing that and it take millions and billions of times before a miner uh, uh, successfully, guys, successfully finds the correct nonsense to get the correct hash. Uh, and so when the first miner manages to find this nonsense, uh, this miner will be rewarded with some bitcoins and the, and the block will be appended to the blockchain. And all of the other miners will be notif notified that this block is mined and it is appended. And so this is proof of work, guys. I, I, I hope my explanation was clear enough. But basically, let, let's recap. You have the new block, you hash all of the transactions in the, in the new block, you get this thing. And then you need to find this other thing, which is nonsense. And so when you hash those two together, your hash needs to start with a certain number of zeros. And it's easy to check, however, it's hard to find the nonsense. And so guys, this was proof of work. 
Uh, and it basically means that whenever a miner mines a, uh, a block, he or she needs to spend a lot of electricity and uh, CPU cycles in order to guess this nonsense. So that is proof of work. And the downsides, as you may imagine, is that it's, it requires a lot of unnecessary electricity. I mean, we have millions of machines just guessing this uh, problem and trying to find the nonsense. So it's very inefficient, guys, in terms of wasted CPU cycle. And uh, it's very expensive as well. And uh, it costs, uh, it's a high cost. So those are the downsides of proof of work. And that is why, that is why uh, Ethereum is trying to go from uh, proof of work to proof of stake. And another, guys, another issue with proof of work is the issue that is called um, the tragedy of the commons. Meaning that uh, when the difficulty or when the reward for the miners decrease over time, which it, which it does in, for example, Bitcoin, the miners get less and less reward as time passes. And so when this occurs, the decrease of uh, reward, uh, less miners will mine uh, these blocks. And this opens up a vul vulnerability to malicious people who can easily acquire or more easily acquire 51% of the hashing power and thus uh, destroy the network. So guys, we want to, and that, that is why Ethereum wants to go from proof of work to proof of stake. So what does proof of stake mean? It is, uh, it is like proof of work. However, however, it tries uh, proof of stake tries to eliminate the whole uh, the whole issue where we have many miners spending CPU cycles. So instead, we have the miners who have the most uh, ethers will be most likely to mine the new blocks, and it will no longer be called mining. I think. And so instead of uh, counting how how many CPUs you have or GPUs and how how much you've spent on the hardware we instead count how much money you have in the blockchain and we do that because we think that when you have a lot of money in the blockchain you are less likely to to harm the network you are less likely to do false uh, blocks, to mine false blocks, because by doing that, you will decrease the value of your uh, of your uh, tokens, of your ethers. And so this is the main difference between proof of work and proof of stake. In proof of work, we uh, the person who has the most uh, hashing power wins. Uh, he will guess the next block easier. However, in proof of stake, the person who has the most money in the blockchain will most likely mine the new block. And this also eliminates the 51% attack problem because when you have 51% of all the tokens in the blockchain, it's a lot of money, guys. It's a lot, a lot of money. And therefore, it is less likely for you to uh, destabilize the network and to destroy the network if you have so much money invested in it. And that is, that is a big reason why people are switching, why Ethereum is trying to switch from proof of work to proof of stake. And so Ethereum uh, tries to switch to a specific proof of stake algorithm called Casper. And so a feature of this algorithm is that malicious, malicious uh, validators, and the validator is the person who validates a block. And uh, so the validator will actually lose money if 
he or she validates a false block or a malicious block that is not correct. And that is a specific feature of Casper that is not in other uh, proof of stake algorithms. So it will be really interesting to follow this whole development from proof of work to proof of stake. Um, and okay, let's talk about some details in proof of stake. So in proof of stake, when you validate an algorithm, you actually lock up a sum of money, your stake, and you can't get, get it back until, until the block is validated. And you can actually lose your money or a part or a part of your locked up stake if you validate false blocks in the Casper proof of stake algorithm. And so, yeah, guys, what do you think? Do you agree with the whole philosophy of proof of stake or do you prefer proof of work? Leave your comments in the comment section below, guys. And if you are a new viewer, guys, oh my God, and you like, <laughs> and you like cryptocurrencies, you like uh, technology, app development, web development, you should definitely subscribe to this channel because you will find this channel interesting, guys. I myself am a software developer and I post videos every single day, guys. So today we talked about proof of work versus proof of stake. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.